I've got something to tell you about all the prison escapes that I've done. A lot of the escape plans had flaws, yes, just like the prisons themselves. But that's not what I have to tell you. You see, for every one of my prison escapes, I've been holding back. The reason I've been doing this is for the sake of theatrics. It was a far better challenge. Look where that got me. In every one of my prison escapes, I've restrained myself in one way or another. Not letting myself smuggle in items, not dying, and the one that I did for every single one of them was being alone. But ironically, the best way to break out of prison is to break into prison and kill the prisoner. Or in other words, have someone else break in from the outside. Someone like me. I'm going to be breaking into multiple in inescapable prisons to rescue an armor stand named Delilah. All of this because you weren't satisfied, were you? You wanted to see a 100% valid escape, no matter how boring and mundane it may be. Even if the original escape plan was so much more compelling, you wanted to see how I would actually escape these prisons. The methods that, feasibly, no guard could stop, and the version of Mithridak that isn't restrained. You want to see it? Fine. Now we're getting into the chunk band prisons. These are prisons that all use basically the same chunk band layout. These prisons are where it gets real. This is where the prison builders actually tried to step up their game in prison making. Although of course like always, they failed, and just made subpar remixes of essentially the same prison. They're just as easy to break as any other, even if they use a suicide switch that in reality nobody would have the guts to press in an actual survival scenario. But for the sake of argument, for all of these prisons, it would be wise to have two people doing it. One doing the escape method that I'm about to show you, and the other waiting outside. If the person inside messes up in some way and triggers a suicide button, then he can tell the other escapist, hey, they suicided. Which is actually a blessing in disguise because now there's no guards to worry about. They all chunk band themselves to preserve their pride, I guess. So then the person on the outside can slowly chip away at the prison with wither cannons or TNT flying machines until they get to the chunk band machines, destroy them, and then get the prisoner out that way. Because there's actually no way to counter withers and wither cannons. Some may argue that bubble elevators stop them, but all you need to do is have the wither destroy the soul sand. Vertex's Vault. It's considered to be one of the best prisons in the prison community. And before I go through the nether portal, I'm going to splash invis and slow falling potions. Now there's a guard and a composter glitch watching the visitors every move, but they can't see me. I jump, and then as soon as the pistons fire, I pearl and then I'm in the top of the nether portal. This obviously wasn't the best example, you can do it much cleaner and quieter, but it gets the job done nonetheless. But Mithrodek, couldn't they see the pearl in your hand, or the pearl when you threw it? Absolutely not. Their own tunnel blocks their line of sight to the top of the portal, which means I can just stay here until the time is right where I can make my move. But before I get to the Swiss cheese, I'm going to stop at the Y coordinate 57. Ah, the Pyramid, also known as Minecraft's laggiest prison. It's so laggy that my replay mod refused to record whenever I was in the world. What the-
2,000 years later. This escape is going to be very precise and very dependent on coordinates. Here's my inventory. Also, I'm going to be doing this escape without the mining fatigue administered by the impossible elder guardians that they have. Although with the mining fatigue, it would just take longer. Nothing changes. Remember to use the F3 plus T trick. In my original video, I underestimated the range of the chunk bands and claimed that I could stand still and pearl past them. That was my bad. It was wrong. Whatever am I going to do? If only I had an elytra. Now I keep F3 and chunk borders on so I can know exactly where I am. chunk band, and then my pearl will land right in the center of the volcano, which is mostly safe, although there's one part that's sometimes chunk band, so I need to be careful. I go to these cords, and then dig down. I dig until I get to 89 on the y-axis. This is right above the observers. And now here's where Gaia's vault shoots itself in the foot. It has an AFK tunnel that the guards have to use so that the guardians don't desync and the auto-suicide doesn't enable. Although, to make sure they didn't ban themselves while using it, they have to disable the Area 2 chunk band, which unbans a few blocks off of the side of the the roof detector. Two thousand years later. Detector. Get stasis out, wait for the chunk band to go away, and then do it again until I'm through. Or I could have another person help me and go in from the bottom to trigger the lockdown light in that area while I mine in from the top as the sirens are blaring, and by the time they find and kill that person at the bottom, I'm through. Or I could go in with the prisoner, invisible, and do things from there. Or I could just slowly destroy it block by block with wither cannons and TNT dupers until it was nothing but a crater in the ground. And I could do it too. I would know exactly where the chunk band are because I have memorized each one's placements. I have studied this place in and out. I know every block of this prison by heart. I've been obsessed ever since they imprisoned me for nothing and killed my best friend. But then again, we could just accept the fact that no prison is inescapable, really. Because there is no counter against wither cannons or enderpearl stasis chambers, or even the fact that the easiest escape is to simply not click on any beds or even enter the prison in the first place. I mean, what are they gonna do? threaten to kill your pet bird?